Next on Worcester News tonight, hundreds fill East Park for Worcester's annual Independence Day celebration. Plus, the heat wave continues, how people in Central Mass are trying to stay cool. We're lighting up the sky tonight as part of the City of Worcester's Independence Day fireworks celebration. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Anna Botari. The event hosted by Fallon Health and the Worcester Regional Chamber of Commerce expected a crowd of around 30,000 people this evening. Our Cam Jandro spoke with guests as they arrived to enjoy the show. As the sun sets on downtown Worcester, Central Massachusetts celebrates Independence Day. We have the chance to celebrate our, well, our country, our country's birthday, independence, freedom. That's what being Americans all about. That's it. The city's Cristoforo Colombo Park hosted the annual celebration with hundreds turning out to commemorate America's 242nd birthday. Veteran Frank Musi set up his seat early Monday evening. The World War II vet says he's appreciative of his country. We count our blessings. God, I tell you, I'm only 93 now, that's all. I'm just, you know, hoping to continue for another 93 more years. The Massachusetts Symphony Orchestra hosted a free concert at the celebration. Usually I'm working the night, the night of them, so I'm so happy I had tonight off and was able to come down and see the show. I'm originally from a rural area in Maryland, and we didn't have many choices for fireworks. It was mainly just the one town. Um, Beat in Central Mass, uh, so many different options to consider. But the most popular aspect of Monday was... The fireworks. I mean, fireworks is fireworks. So. The fireworks are what, my, what really bring me here every year. Now, the fireworks display in Worcester tonight will not be the only one in Central Massachusetts this week. Millbury and Rutland will have shows tomorrow, July 3rd, and on July 4th, Millbury will also have another one. Reporting in Worcester tonight, I'm Cam Jandro. Worcester News tonight. Thanks, Cam. Millions of drivers across the country are set to hit the roads this holiday week. Here in Worcester County, the great getaway has already begun. Our Rosalind Flaherty has the details. A record number of people will hit the road this week for the 4th of July. AAA is projecting about 47 million Americans will get behind the wheel over the holiday. Falls in the middle of the week so more people can go either the first weekend or the second weekend so it gives them more options. AAA Public Affairs Specialist Drew Carlson says gas prices are down three cents this week in Massachusetts, which is good news for travelers. We're coming down from the high 290s uh, that we had earlier in uh, late May. Carlson says the busiest time on the roads will be Tuesday from 3.30 to 6.30 p.m. Travelers who stopped at the Charlton Service Plaza say they are trying to avoid those times and say they didn't experience any backups Monday morning. Pretty good. They're uh, rolling smooth. Heading uh, westbound, things seem to be okay, but I know that it'll become a calamity once we get uh, closer to New York City. They say they have a few tricks of their own to get to their holiday destination on time. Start early and drive long. We use Waze, so it tells us um, it avoids traffic and gives alternate routes. Try to stay in the middle of the day. <laughs> Stay out of rush hour time. Rosalind Flaherty, Worcester News Tonight. More than 30 communities, including Worcester, will receive money from the state to purchase Narcan and other related medical supplies. $940,000 will be given to 33 communities. According to the state's website, opioid-related deaths are down overall from last year. But Worcester's Commissioner of Health and Human Services, Dr. Maddie Castile, says the number of overdose deaths are slightly up in Worcester from last year. She says they're working to change this and says the grant will help to continue the work they're putting in. Truly need to have that. I mean, it's like, you know, we went out through the whole community really teaching everybody how to do CPR. We have to do the same in our community. Narcan needs to be available for everybody so that we can prevent overdoses. Dr. Castile says they're also working on more follow-up, including more medically-assisted treatment out in the community. 
The Cannabis Control Commission okays the state's first retail marijuana shop. Issuing a provisional license to a company who's already operates a medical facility in Leicester. The town worked out a host agreement with Cultivate in April, allowing the license to move forward. Abby Nesgoda has the details. We're very excited, you know, to be the first. 25 years old and now the owner of the first pot shop in the state to get the license needed to sell it. Commissioner Title. Aye. The Cannabis Control Commission voting unanimously to award the first retail license for recreational use to Sam Barber's company, Lester based Cultivate. In terms of having the ability to do it, you know, we're ready to go. He took us on a tour of the Central Massachusetts facility last week. It's already a medical dispensary, and even with this vote, it'll stay that way for now. Well, you still can't walk in to Cultivate and buy it today. Why is that? Uh, a few more details that the, the CCC is working on, uh, you know, ironing out, but I feel like we are getting a lot closer. Those details include having an independent lab to test their products, but those labs need licenses too, and so far none have them. The chairman says they're being careful not to rush a highly complicated process. We are doing this right. We are doing this in the long term. There is no le legislative mandate that uh, pot stores were going to be open on, on July 1st. Barber says he's confident the first cannabis sold in the Commonwealth will come from Cultivate and soon. I feel like we're ready. Um, you know, our team is, has been working very hard and, uh, you know, I'm hopeful in the next, you know, few weeks. Cultivate hopes to be selling by September. However, no one on the commission wanted to comment about any sort of target date. They only told us that they have about 60 other applications to consider, and they hope to approve a few licenses at each of their meetings. In Boston, I'm Abby Nez. Go to Worcester News Tonight. Temperatures hitting the 90s for the third day in a row now. The heat wave causing Central Mass residents to find ways to stay cool. And doctors say this weather can be dangerous for children and the elderly. Our Chandler Walsh has the story. Families splash around at Crompton Park Pool in Worcester, trying to get relief from the high temperatures. Burns my feet. I'm very hot, but the pool cools me down, so it's, it's pretty good. The city of Worcester is warning parents to remember summer safety tips, like supervising children around water and protecting their skin. It comes as more children are outdoors and in the hot sun. They like being here. They don't like being in the house, of course. It's summertime, so they do drag me out. Parents at the pool say they're protecting their kids in the heat wave by regularly applying sunscreen and making sure they're drinking enough water. And they say playing in the water is the secret to happy and healthy kids. Go to the sprinkler, sprinkler parks, yeah, balloon fights, hose. water guns, yep, <laughs> the old the school hose. <laughs> Towns across the county are offering indoor alternatives to beat the heat. South Bro Senior Center opened as a cooling center all day Monday. Public health nurse Leslie Chamberlain says the heat is more dangerous for seniors. Definitely the elderly <laughs> um, and anybody who has a heart condition and difficulty breathing, um, you know, the, the heavy air is really uh, a danger to them. Chamberlain says the center also helps seniors install air conditioning units so they can be comfortable in their own homes and say it's necessary to stay hydrated. Water's the best, not caffeinated beverages, or if you drink caffeinated beverages, that's fine, but you should offset it with a good amount of water. Um, and just avoid exertion, you know, rest, stay home, watch TV, read a book. That was our Chandler Walsh reporting. For the first year, a summer concert series is coming to Green Hill Park. Organizers from the Green Hill Neighborhood Association have organized concerts each Sunday in July. Founder Winnie Octave says the concert's com summer concert series is an effort to create community engagement at the park with creative programming and to bring back music to Worcester's largest park. In our four, four or five years, we have done a lot trying to improve and keep, make our neighborhood safe and a good place to live. So people could come with their chairs, with their blankets, and we're going to have a, um, a hot dog truck over there, and come and relax and have some nice music for two hours and go home and feel good about themselves. The Summer Concert Series kicks off July 8th.